who's walking through the mall. It turns out, if you're dressed like this, they'll just immediately give you a job handing out candy in Santa's village. So why'd you take the job? It was across from Annie Ann's. I really like their samples. Why are we just standing here? Because I ate all of the candy I was supposed to hand out. And when you do that, they want you to replace it. And there's only one guy I know of who will give us Christmas candy on the down low. Mm -hmm. Who is that? Oh, God, no. Ho, ho, ho! Welcome, children! I see someone's come back for Santa Christ Christmas candy! Children, I'm gonna be 40 this month. I certainly don't dress like it. <laughs> you look like Harvey if Jimmy Stewart got drunk on Pepto Bismol. What? I know what you came for, children, but we're gonna definitely shake things up this year. How so? Santa Christ wants his candy to appeal to a new audience. So this year, I'm gonna skip the candy and give the children what they really want. My opinion on current events. What? What? No, no, that's not why I'm here. Too late! There! Now I can look down on you and feel superior in every way. Your soapbox looks cheap and pandering. Oh, so now you hate all soapboxes! What? No, no, that's not what I said! But wait, let's hear him out. Maybe it'll be subtle. Yes, let us not forget that It's a Wonderful Life also had a message, therefore making anything I say good. Those are the rules nowadays. There I was in North Jerusalem, when my trip took a turn for the problematic, when the patriarchy reared its ugly head and kink-shamed Santa Christ while culturally appropriating Italian plumbers, when in reality only few had tried whipping the maple syrup from my blood. You know what this is reminding me of? rock -a doodle What? No. Black Christmas, 2019. Oh, yeah. Should probably talk about that movie. Yeah, let's let him finish his soapbox. Hopefully the candy will show up soon. The 2019 Black Christmas remake is a very charitable film which gave the 2006 Black Christmas the greatest gift of all. By being so bad, it made that one look quite alright, in retrospect. Directed by Sophia Takal and co-written by Takal and April Wolf, the movie seemed to make some missteps from the beginning. It's not so much that it's a slasher film cut to a PG-13, but the director purposefully sought out a PG-13 to make it accessible to new audiences. Ah yes, the PG-13 slasher film, co-word for this is going to be a terrible slasher film. Aw oh, man, who doesn't remember being a kid and thinking, what? Oh my god, you guys, there's a new slasher movie out and it's PG-13? I can't wait for mom to take us. This is going to be so cool. This is going to be even better than that comedy that cut out all the funny parts. Not saying there aren't great horror movies not rated R, but in terms of slasher films, it's a little hard to do that when you can't show one of the words in the genre. Just like when R-rated Deep Throat Part 2 couldn't show any deep throating. The movie's also a feminist revenge movie as it's about sorority sisters facing off against a cult of rapey frat boys. There's nothing wrong with that being in the movie. The original film had a subplot about abortion, but while that was effectively used not only to build up a red herring, but was treated very serious and added depth to characters big and small and made the situation very real. This is a buzzword movie that's less like a movie script and more like a tweet thread. Saying this is like the original Black Christmas, cause both have politics, is like saying Birdemic is just like the birds, cause they both have feathers. Although it probably looks bad that it's two dudes reviewing the movie on the internet. No, 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 it's okay. Remember, we got Laura to watch the movie with us, see? Well, personally, I thought that the movie... And as you can see, she'll tell us that the movie is really bad and that we should review it. Phew, got up easy on that one. <laughs> yeah. With it being a Bloomhouse movie, you know it costs $5 million or under, which, again, gives it no excuse for a PG-13. They still would have made their low budget back. The opening quote comes in demanding a like and a retweet. Huh. With proper education, man can be Freddy Krueger. Who on earth wrote this quote? 
Ah, now I see. They've all come together for the holidays to worship the god of Alan Ladd. And with credits playing over the fire, you're right. I should be watching The Beyond instead. Just like if you're a kid wanting to get into horror films, including political ones, you could, I don't know, just watch Black Christmas. But this one has the Black Christmas Yule Log, as it sits burning men's tears. No, they're just preparing for their wake for the first person killed in the movie. They're happy because she was the one who never threw away her uneaten food before putting the dish in the sink. The killer is ready to PG-13 her, which means confusing her to death with a pig cat emoji. Oh, thank God a monkey's here. He'll tell her that the correct answer is both taste great with a nice glaze and covered in pineapple. I've seen a lot of slasher films where the person runs to knock on a random house, but this here might be a first. <laughs> By George, does the killer also own this house too? And since we can't actually show what's going to be done with this, let's just sprinkle some syrup on it and lick it for a dessert. Remember when John McClane killed someone with an icicle? This is that if it were called Die Soft 2. Die Softer. I remember when I first saw this and pointing at this image and saying, Ha! That's a dick! But now, knowing how the movie ends, I'm pretty sure that actually is foreshadowing. Which shows you that you're about to watch something as subtle as a snow angel's dick in the snow. Like in all Black Christmas movies, our leads are a group of sorority sisters, only these characters get all their clothes from Club Yaz Queen while living in a luxurious dorm on a studio lot. After they've had their breakfast, a foreshadowing. Oh, okay, good, because I thought it sounded cute, like Dickensian or something. Wait, Dickensian? Dick? Dick at the beginning of the film? Brilliant! The statues are all very confused at trying to put this mystery together. The banana obviously signals that Attila the gorilla has gone on a sorority girl killing rampage. They do still get some learning in on this campus, though I'm not sure why they all signed up for Straw Man 101. The very language and logic modern woman uses to assail patriarchal culture were the invention of men. Hmm, not one of Hannity's best books. There hasn't been a single reference to the war on Christmas. Who here can tell me what they think this writer is trying to suggest? It's that Santa Inc. was an abomination. Have I not made this clear enough? Look, I drew the female and male symbols on the chalkboard. That should tell you these arguments are going to get as deep into the sexes as God's Not Dead does with religion. I can't imagine why anyone would want Professor Kerry Elways fired. Very difficult for me to do my job. When there's a petition circulating to have me fired. Facts care not for your feelings. I will continue to indoctrinate you all by just chanting Let's Go Brandon throughout the entire lecture. It's all I have! But there's really no heroes in the movie. If you're not a misogynistic professor, you're a self-righteous, narcissistic asshole. You already got the college to remove the Founders Bus from the administration building. Isn't that enough crusading? Uh, no. Calvin Hawthorne no. was a racist and a sexist. He owned slaves. Oh, so you're gonna drop out and go to another school? What? No! How can I pat myself on the back and tell people I'm a good person if I do that? Again, the first movie had a message, too. This one? I mean, are we just supposed to not study the classics? Whose classics are they? Will you at least sign my petition? You of all people should care. I thought we were sisters. You don't want to confront the white supremacist patriarchy. Yes, come on. Split a snickerdoodle with me? No, no. It would be a nice message that says no matter your politics, you can still be the biggest asshole in the room. If it actually intended on having that message. But uh-oh, here comes Landon to be a possible love interest for our lead, Riley, if he doesn't screw this up. Sorry for the wait. No worries, I, I don't mind waiting. Sorry, that was really... Thank you. You know who else liked iced coffee? Hitler. Try getting out of that one. Shit, this is Black Christmas. I thought it was a buzzword Christmas, or whatever overused line they throw in. I can handle it. What's the worst that can happen? Black Christmas, as written by Bubsy. Maybe it's time to check back in on Santa Christ. Let me look at his live feed. Possibly he's gotten around to getting us the candy. Bubsy was very problematic, children, as it expressed cat supremacy while downgrading the doggy middle class by using dog whistles such as poodle queens. Maybe we should take a break. I don't know. I almost want to see where this goes. 
Crisp winter nights, sleigh bells, crackling yule logs. Remember those. After Black Christmas, they'll never be the same again. Black Christmas. If this movie doesn't make your skin crawl, it's on too tight. Rated R. The girls are all planning for their big Christmas musical number that is unfortunately in the same hall in which the boys are worshipping the god of smug curtis. And even the deer is looking at them with strong, trying to picture you naked vibes. Like in all cults, they just do it during regular hours when there's people in the building and they leave the doors unlocked so anyone could just look in. How else will you lure in new members? This all seems legit. It can't be too terrifying. It's covered in PG-13 or edited for a green band trailer blood, which does come into play later on. It's like dorm purgatory. If there's not a cult in one room, there's a date rape in the other. What the hell's going on in the third door? Excellent, classic panty raid shenanigans. The true college experience has arrived. There's more important things though. Here you go, let's get all of that vomit out. I know I should tell you there's a cult across the hall where they're practicing a blood oath on a crying statue, but we can get to that later. We've got a song to sing where we call out the rapey frat boys, where again, we also come across like dicks. No, absolutely not. You know the choreography and you sing. Yeah, but he's here. This way of life is unsustainable, Riley. Yes, thank you. I will choose your words for you as I guilt trip you into going on stage to sing about your own rape. There's almost some good satire throughout this whole movie, especially in how the frat guys look alike, and I'm not really sure which is which. Hell, it's even followed by their rape song, Up in the Frat House. Don't say that this was my fault. Cause what you did is called assault. Aw oh, shit bro, this is gonna make our follow-up cover of Baby It's Cold Outside seem really awkward by comparison. Yeah, bad timing bro. Unfortunately, while they're on the lookout for the evil frat guys, the movie seems completely unaware of creepy male feminists. It's <laughs> Riley, right? Yeah. I was really impressed that that takes guts. Somehow you're the creepiest, most sinister seeming one in the movie, and the film has no idea. I'll sign it. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was cool that you got them to get rid of Calvin Hawthorne's bust. Uh, and the way Professor Gelson yelled at you in class was really lame. And he's not even funny either. Why is Santa Claus scared of getting stuck in the chimney? Because he's claustrophobic. Ugh, on second thought, I'm just gonna hang out with the frat guys. They can do a sweet Dane Cook routine. Why in God's name would you have this horror movie about rape culture, but then dress your male hero exactly like Bill Cosby? Hell, the other characters are so forgettable they have to put the name Helena on her necklace. And if that doesn't work, here, let's put the character's name right on the door. Cause fans of slasher films have no standards, right? <laughs> Slasher movie fans love it when you just cut to black. I'm fairly certain that the most blood in the movie is on the diva cup she used. And goddammit, if this is gonna be a pure flicks movie for the left, then I still want my war on Christmas! Happy holidays, Franny. Hey, Merry Christmas. Wow, Merry Christmas. You're being kinda Hitler right now, just saying. The Nazis were known for saying Merry Christmas while strangling people with decorations. Oh, there you are. Wait, wait, why did you cut? We want to see more bloody ripoffs of Exorcist 3! They still keep getting texts under the name Calvin Hawthorne, the dead founder of the school. But after finding out it's not really Michael Landon, they have no idea who it could be. Best reference some other movies to narrow it down. Hello? Hello. Do you like shitty horror movies? I was going to ask you trivia about the 2009 Sorority Row, but it's no longer that shitty thanks to this film. Yeah, yeah, okay, the Scream films, but can we reference something a little more snowy and classic? Why are you so grouchy right now? <laughs> I'm not being grouchy. I just really love throwing in Jack Torrance lines to show his toxic creativity. There are some slight throwbacks to the first movie, like not knowing when one of the sisters is dead. For instance, here they stick her up on a balcony like a sequel to The Hangover where they never found the missing friend. And I still don't trust this guy. I've... Uh, I was just brushing up to 
beat you at bad jokes later tonight. <laughs> Just ignore all the red flags right now. This whole school is a mess. They removed the bust of Hawthorne by student demand and have nothing to replace it with. They were going to put up Albert Einstein instead, but they haven't looked through all of his old tweets to see if he's passed the purity test. Some are getting into the college spirit, though, like Riley peeking into the windows just to see what it's like. Pluto made it look so fun. Unfortunately, Professor Elwis is here to deliver a jump scare and also show evidence that he is absolutely in on this somehow. There are no covert meetings in hidden rooms where men discuss how to bury women. Every dude is showing signs of evil. Since when do you drink beer? I like beer. What? You're drinking the Kool-Aid of the enemy and becoming more of a stereotypical toxic male filled with the cores of the bandit! Because he's the asshole in this scenario and not Chris who posted up their act online without asking them. Well, yeah, I, I thought the point of calling out frat boy rape culture was to inspire women. What's the big deal? So I posted this video on the internet and now you're getting harassed and threatened about it. You should be thanking me. This movie has the energy of someone who tells a complete stranger to do better while deadbolting a closet full of their own skeletons. Some of these characters have it right. It's too stressful watching them fight. I'm just gonna go into a creepy old room where, hello, we finally found the dead body from the first movie. I mean, we'll just assume that's what that was. They cut away again. That's still less stressful than watching this internet argument come to life, as if you've gotten an AI to generate a Twitter argument. Because men have all the power. Not all men have power. Did you just not Don't. all men me? Not all men are rapists, Chris, okay? I'm not. Wow, does he not like being called a rapist? What a jerk. No, no, he has to call her hysterical to get the full straw man effect. I don't give a shit! Get out! I have more! Is it your time of the month? Listen to my stereotypes! I should be feeling sorry for these characters who are being chased by a cult of rapists. How do you screw up your character so bad that when the villains do turn up... Oh my god. And I'm like, eh. Too bad we still can't hear asshole boyfriend outside saying, If you only had some guns, huh? Hashtag gun save lives! Hell, even with the heroes, it feels like any minute now, this conversation would happen. Now that we're alone, I feel safe to say I found an old holiday episode of Cheers. It was super problematic. I know, Norm Peterson never should have said those horrible things about his wife. So problematic. The movie simultaneously wants to show you how much smarter they are, yet they still have them doing dumb shit like splitting up and walking around the house alone. Clearly you need to take the broken leg girl and throw her out as a sacrifice. Sacrifices have to be made to appease the cancel gods. But not too much. We don't want to over scare you in the slasher film. In this movie, you can do something heroic and it will still paint you as the bad guy. Look what happens when he fights the urges of the Coors Light dick powers of evil. Someone hurts my girl, it's my duty to protect. Show yourself, coward! This is a man! Ah, uh, killed by my own toxic masculinity! I try saving them from a killer! Truly, I'm the asshole and deserve to die! But again, it doesn't even make up for it in the violence department. The 2006 one was also stupid, but it had crazy ass scenes of incest and making Christmas cookies out of human flesh. This one cuts away from making a scratch on someone's face. It can barely show how one of them is killed and is more interested in them saying, I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you crazy feminists and your stupid cuck. But with the killer dead, they wrap this up fast. Uh, wait, there's more killers? Oh my god, it is Scream. There's Skeet Ulrich, Matthew Lillard, Timothy Oliphant, and, um, whoever the killer was in Scream 3. Yes, yes, we can be annoyed by how much it's working its ass off at cutting around the death scenes, just like Santa Christ denying me my candy and giving me a soapbox. But that will not prepare you for what the explanation of the film is, or how brain dead the characters are. Wait a minute, oh right, did I forget to tell you I saw this cult earlier in the film with their literal toxic masculinity? The cult of frat boys, led by Professor Respect the Cock, is called the Deeks, because they're a bunch of deek heads always thinking with their deeks. Ah! They were doing something with this black stuff that was coming out of the Founder's bust. It was like black magic or sorcery or something. 
Black Christmas, everyone, totally the same as the first one. You know, just like how the original is exactly like the Life Zone. What? They both have abortion in them. Context, writing, and execution doesn't exist in this dojo. When we come back, we'll learn the secret of the ooze, because if you like the Ninja Turtles, that automatically means you have to like this. Christmas evil. The non-believers. You better believe in Santa, or he'll slay you. Christmas evil. The night he dropped in. Now that we're back, I don't know, it seems easy enough to kill these frat guys. You don't even have to show any violence to kill them. I thought that you were a fighter. Um, excuse me, it's my job to be the guilt-trippy one. Yeah, and as a male feminist, I feel obligated to help or, um, let you fight yourself. I, I don't know what the right answer is. Please tell me the right answer so you'll sleep with me. Stand with us so we can make our horror version of Eyes Wide Shut if all they could show was dry humping. Oh, and if it was about a cult of frat boys controlled by a sexist professor that uses literal oozing toxic masculinity to brainwash them into becoming rapist frat boys and it's not a comedy. I, I, I want you to suck a fat fart because you just got zated. That's not even the dumbest line in the scene. That's just the founder <sighs> drawing out your true <sighs> alpha. Ah. Yes, you will not destroy our statue of conservative tears. The toxic masculinity will ooze from our founding fathers straight into your veins. And there's nothing your feminist gods and diva cups can do about it. Those are the words of our leader, Calvin Hawthorne. Hawthorne foresaw the threat posed by women. So he took precautions in case they strayed too far out of line. You will pay for our leader's cancellation for old photos of blackface when choosing the minority scholarship. This would all be brilliant if it was a cult run by Dennis on an episode of It's Always Sunny. But instead, we're following these characters, whose idea of a terrible day is finding out that Chris Pratt woke up and had breakfast. The bastard! But props for saying some of this shit with a straight face. And the spirit of Calvin Hawthorne filled the pledges, possessing them. All we had to do was name the women who had stepped out of line. Again, it's like it's trying to be an answer to all the dated 80s college comedies, except those are still better at being comedies than this is a slasher film, because at least they kept in their jokes. The sacrifices entail collecting various items from the girls by a traitor in their midst, and I'm glad it flashed back because I would have no idea this is the same person from earlier. Also, they're not appreciating how truly progressive this cult has become. Look, we've got a girl and we've got a black guy. Isn't that what you wanted? Nah, you're right. We can't have both. We just need one. But I did everything that I was supposed to. <laughs> just like the time Tucker Carlson snapped the neck of Candace Owens live on air. It's funny when you're watching a terrible movie and you know they put in a huge applause moment that probably didn't happen in theaters. You messed with the wrong sisters. Yay! You can see elements of what could be a clever satire. It could have been awesome if this plot point happened maybe halfway into the movie and the rest was dedicated to pure on-screen carnage and chaos with the sorority sisters facing off against the frat boy cult. But unfortunately, this movie has no interest in being Night of the Creeps or Night of the Demons and instead wants to be Norma Ray crossed with crammed in exposition and bad LARPing. Plus another applause moment that didn't happen. We will never be broken. What? Uh -huh. Oh, sorry. I went into the restroom. Did I miss anything? Yeah, suck on my PG-13, sexist! Carrie always will be okay. He'll be reincarnated into playing more or less the same character in The Unholy. This doesn't even make sense. Landon comes out of his trance, but the others are still evil? So were they just always murderous, rapey frat boys? If so, why did they even need the toxic masculinity to turn them into murder zombies? Still, Landon will have a lot of explaining to do. I'm sorry when I said the 2016 Ghostbusters was meh. It was the toxic black ooze. It was then we decided to go our separate ways, fighting against evil dudes and burning their statues of the toxic masculine patriarchy. Or we could just tweet on Twitter. Yeah, tweeting is much easier. Let's do that. 
There's barely anything good you can say about the 2019 Black Christmas. A movie so arrogant, it might as well come out and say, you can't hate this movie, otherwise you're a white supremacist. But instead, as a Christmas miracle, it brought together all sides, liberal, conservative, critic score, audience score, to say, yeah, this is no good. As a slasher movie, it fails because you can't even compliment the slashing. As a commentary film, it fails because it's like hot fuzz if it didn't know it was a comedy. It feels less like Black Christmas, and more like they accidentally remade Satan's School for Girls, only if every line of dialogue contained the clap emoji between the words. Imagine if I Spit on Your Grave was written by someone who would have protested I Spit on Your Grave. Guess what? It sucks! It's what happens when Lisa Simpson turned in a horror movie script, but it was deemed too clever, so they let Jesse Spano write it. It's a movie about sorority sisters fighting rapists. The main character should not be this unlikable. God damn it, I paid to see some slashing. The least it could do is give me the slashing. And where the hell is Santa Cruz with my damn candy? And that's why Judas was appropriately cancelled. Not for betrayal, but for kissing me on the cheek without my consent. Here, now, have a fig bar, children. Ugh. Well, I don't know. Fig bars are pretty good, and he is making some interesting points about Schneider from one day at a time, using his powerful landlord privilege to assault the toilet seat. You are 40! <laughs> We're both 40! You're the one in the fucking bunny suit! 